Hello and welcome back once again uh, to the second part of the Block C in-depth series videos. So um, this time I'll be going over the clean geometry section. So um, as you can see here, it takes the uh, geometry from Unreal. And first of all, it scales it down. So Unreal um, exports using its own um, measurements, which are centimeters. And when you import that into in, in um, Houdini, it turns it into this huge geometry. So the first step I take in this clean geometry is I just scale it down 100 times. So that's why it scales down. Um, an error I made in the overview video is saying that this um, little purple part that's overlapping because it's a grid, I was mistaken with this part here. So this kind of overlaps as well. Um, here it's just an uh, extrusion error. So yeah, let's get that out of the way first. So um, the first thing you can see when using this node here is that it has a bunch of options here. So first of all, most notable is the material input. This is the most important part. So what this basically does is, let me first open up the geometry spreadsheet and go to the Unreal geometry. So when you export um, an FBX, it holds a um, material path on the primitives. So as you can see here, I'm just scrolling through them right now. They all have the world grid material. But if I go all the way to the bottom here, you can see that there's different ones. So here we have the walls one, uh, stairs, platforms, floor. Um, and this is basically the pipeline of how I want this tool to be used. So the designer assigns shaders to the parts he wants to be used. In this case, I applied them to the top. Um, and those shaders are then input into this tool and those are um, then converted to geometry to be used later in the tool. So um, this is a slightly more complicated setup. Um, but in general, it can be divided in a couple of sections. So first, I'm scaling it down here. So here, there's an if statement. So um, actually, if you go up here, let's go over the interface a bit more. Um, there's an Unreal unit input. So you can say if it's centimeters or meters, so if it's meters, it doesn't scale it down, but when it's centimeters, it does change, scale it down. Then we have the material input. You basically just um, input the name of the shader and the uh, system takes care of the rest. Here, there's a extrusion thing. So I thought maybe it could be interesting to just have them extrude it. Um, yeah, so that's what that does. And as you can see here, it kind of creates issues um, in there. Yeah, set it to 10 for now. Um, so this part here, the geometry color ID, it's just mostly aesthetics. Um, so I can change this around. You can see the colors are changing as well. So this is mostly for me just have something you need to look at. This advanced option is something at the top, so I'll get back to that later. Just like the FBX merger, um, this has a output option, so I can set the geometry type and just hit save to disk. The advanced options in here, uh, this was a attempt to basically make something to allow the designers to give me feedback. So the way the system works is it looks at a shader. So these are the shaders, it looks at them and it identifies them based on keywords. So if, the, if a keyword is inside of the name of a shader, then it assigns it to a certain um, group. So for instance, here uh, we have ground floor, large wall and ceiling and corridor. Now these are ones that can potentially be added. So what you can do is you can export additional inputs. So just click this button um, and it exports a point with these keywords and output name. Uh, the uh, user of this tool would then be able to send me this point and I would be able to add all these things to the system. As currently I have no way of uh, adding it kind of procedurally, I suppose. So let's actually dive in here so that assigning of the groups is happening here. Here, a um, the material is extracted and it gets added to a certain group. And then here it gets cleaned up and then that color thing happens here. So for now, we'll have to look at some black and geometry. So the first thing that happens actually is um, I add some normals. Sometimes the normals messed up a little bit when I didn't and I needed to remove certain parts. So this takes the 
shader name. So um, it takes a shader and it removes it if it doesn't isn't in the shader groups. So this input here, basically if the shader name isn't here, then it removes the primitive. So all the bottom ones are removed because it's in it isn't in there. Um, so after that, I just promote that group count. So I have a amount, the amount of groups in a detail. So here you can see that I also have an attribute for the groups, which I use in a for each subnetwork. Uh, this runs some simple Python code to just check for the type of geometry. Um, here I really was able to use the in function in Python, which I didn't know before. So what it does is it just looks at a string, which it, I call in group, and checks to see if the first word is inside of that string. So basically, it, like it says here, if stairs in string group, then the room type is stairs. Uh, this is then set added to an attribute. So here we have our walls. So if we open it up here, you can see right here, the piece type is set to wall. And here we still have that object path, uh, but that's deleted later. So that's that first part. So here I delete some groups because I don't need them. So all those geometry groups are just deleted. Um, so we're now left with this. Um, I also delete a bunch of attributes because I don't need them, such as the material path group, UVs and everything. Um, I didn't need them for this project, so I just deleted them. Um, this part then goes over the cleaning. So you can see that suddenly everything is just flattened. Um, so what I do here is I input the geometry and I check for connectivity. So um, I try to break down the geometry even more. So what this does is it basically loops over different points. Um, I then use a fuse node to kind of make sure the points are together. So if I do before this, Sometimes there are points that aren't fused. Uh, this case, I guess we're lucky to have some good geometry. Uh, this group then does something I didn't know about for the longest of times. It does a group based on unshared edges. Now this is a really useful option if you want to have the outside of the geometry. So as you can see here, it's cracked here. So that would have glitched out if you wouldn't have done this. Um, so I group it, fuse it again, and then I dissolve it. So the dissolve node works really well with this group unshared edges option because it allows you to take the outside edges and then just dissolve everything that isn't those outside edges. Um, then I use a facet to just um, remove inline points. So sometimes there's just points in between, I just remove those. And then here I transfer the room type using some simple VEX code. Uh, later, those parts are given back, so we've got them back again. Normals are added to at least have something to look at. And um, yeah, reverse the normals in some cases, uh, it doesn't work correctly, so I just reverse them here based on type. Um, so here I just, yeah, extrude it. It's a bit glitchy at the moment. Um, I didn't account for walls, so my system didn't work, so I didn't want to put too much time to try and fix it. And here I tried to add color, but I remembered that um, I didn't, color wouldn't be added until later. So here I just add a index. So depending on the index later on, a color will get assigned. So here we go. Color is assigned using a ramp parameter, which I have here and it's promoted to the subnet above. And there we go. The rest is kind of the same. So these are the controls and the output same as the FVX merger. Um, now this part here are the advanced options. So if you look into the geometry spreadsheet here, um, at this point wrangle here, I think it's a detail, yes. So it adds a string with keywords. And yeah, it just does that. It just adds two strings, so keywords and tags. And you can just take them and use those later. I was thinking of proceduralizing this, but I didn't get the time for it. So yeah, um, that will be the clean geometry system. Next up is the adding of the grid. 
So um, I'll be going over that in the next video. So thank you very much for watching and hopefully till the next one.